Hello, in this video today, I will present a brief summary of Joseph Edison's essay, The Pleasures of Imagination. Edison begins his essay, The Pleasures of Imagination, first focusing on an important difference between the sense of sight and the other senses. Edison says that the sense of sight is greatly advantageous in comparison to other senses because the sense of sight can at once connect one person to objects at a distance. But other senses like feelings cannot establish any connection between a person and an object at some distance. At the same time, the sense of sight can cover multitude of objects, that is many objects at one point of time, but the sense of feeling or other senses cannot accomplish the same action. The sense of sight can also give the viewer an impression of any object of whatever size uh, or whatever length. But the other senses are not able to provide the impression of provide or connect one person with objects of greater size or greater length. In this way, he differentiates between the sense of sight and other senses. But in addition to this, addition also points out to another important aspect of this difference. Addison says, the sense of sight is the main source for the pleasures of imagination. The pleasures of imagination, according to Addison, derives all its raw materials from the sense of sight. And these raw materials or the pleasures of imagination encourage a human being towards virtuous action. But when a person engages in other sensual delights, other senses, this may lead to folly, vices or illicit actions. So, in this way, addition first differentiates between the sense of sight and other senses. One important aspect of this difference is that the sense of sight can give the sense of, can, can present, can provide the sense of color to a person. But this sense of color cannot be provided by the other senses. So, in this way, he considers the sense of sight special and he places the sense of sight at a higher level than the other sensual delights. Next, in this essay, Addition talks about the characteristic features of the pleasures of, pleasures of imagination according to him. He says that the pleasures of imagination gathers all its raw materials from the sight. That means, the sense of sight provides all the ideas, all the images to the pleasures of imagination. And in other words, the pleasures of imagination arise from viewing objects, from visible objects. But pleasures of imagination can also arise from objects which are not in front of a person at one point of time. Pleasures of imagination can also arise from objects or ideas which are in the mind of a person. So, an object can be in front of a person at a single point of time or the image of the object or the idea of the object can be also in the mind of a person. And both these conditions produce pleasures of imagination. The first one that is 
pleasures of imagination arising from objects actually in front of a person is called by Addison the primary pleasures of imagination and pleasures of imagination arising from ideas of object in mind is called by him secondary pleasures of imagination. So, he distinguishes two kinds of pleasures of imagination, primary pleasures of imagination and secondary pleasures of imagination. Secondary pleasures of imagination work on or secondary pleasures of imagination is produced by ideas of objects which are there in the mind of a person. A person brings back or call backs from his memory those images, those ideas and give, it gives a special kind of pleasure and this pleasure is called the secondary pleasures of imagination. And when a person derives a particular pleasure of imagination by looking, by viewing at an object in front of that person, that condition is known, is called by Edison as the primary pleasures of imagination. Edison also distinguishes pleasures of imagination from that of understanding. Edison says that under understanding requires deliberate contemplation. It requires deliberate attention of thought and application of the mind. And because of this attention of the mind and application of the thought, a new knowledge or a new kind of improvement develops in one person. And as a result of this improvement or knowledge, his mental condition, his personality improves from one status to another status. In other words, understanding or new knowledge or improvement of mind as a result of deliberate effort by the person leads, leads to results in his improved status, his transported status. So, Edison says that understanding results in transportation of a person from one status to another status because of the development acquire, acquisition of some new knowledge. At the same time, Edison says that the pleasures of imagination can also provide the similar kind of transportation in a personality. In other words, the pleasures of imagination can also provide same kind of change in us. So, the ultimate result of understanding and the pleasures of imagination is the same according to Joseph Edison, but he points out that pleasures of imagination is special, is very much different from understanding because it does not require the kind of attention of mind or application of, of thought that understanding requires. Pleasures of mind do not involve any deliberate attention or, or, or deliberate application of the mind. It happens automatically. It does not, it is acquired, the pleasures of imagination is acquired easily and effortlessly. So, the pleasures of imagination provide the same kind of transportation that understanding does, but the pleasures of imagination provides it without any deliberate effort or attention of thought invested by one person. In this sense, the pleasures of imagination is different from understanding. The pleasures of imagination also do not put pressure on the brain or the body. 
but understanding requires thoughtful application of the mind and therefore there may be pressure put on the mind and on the body. In contrast to this, pleasures of imagination provides a beneficial effect on human body. Addison quotes Sir Francis Bacon's essay on health to refer to this. He says that Sir Francis Bacon recommended that studies should focus on those texts which has which have illustrations so that the reader can derive pleasures of imagination. So in other words, what, what Francis Bacon was trying to say that reading can have a beneficial health effect on the health. In the same way, the pleasures of imagination is also beneficial for the health of human beings. Pleasures of imagination encourages good emotions, good feelings. It disperses grief and melancholy. In this way, pleasures of imagination exerts a positive impact on human health. Another characteristic of the pleasures of imagination is that it provides pleasures which lead human beings to virtuous action. So, in comparison to it, pleasures provided by other senses, which Addison refers to as sensual delights. So, pleasures provided by sensual delights may lead one person to vice folly, illicit actions, sloth, negligence and remissness. But pleasures of imagination has the sole objective of producing virtue. Pleasures of imagination always helps individuals stick to virtuous ways. Addition here also talks about imagination, pleasures of imagination and its beneficial effect on society. One of the beneficial effect of pleasures of imagination on society I have already discussed that is virtuous action. Pleasures of imagination result in virtue and those pleasures derived from sensual delights may lead one person to folly, vice, sloth, illicit ways, negligence and remissness. Pleasures of imagination also produce various kinds of pleasures in the individual and as an exten extension to the society. When a man possesses pleasures of imagination, he can interact with a picture, the person can enjoy the company of a statue, the person get, can, can generate great satisfaction when he is in a field or in a meadow. He can derive great charm and happiness in the midst of nature. Even a person who is living in a dungeon, who is put in a dark cell or prison, he can also derive virtue through pleasures of imagination by recalling ideas or images of real objects in his mind. In other words, the person in a dungeon or in a cell, in a dark cell can put into use the secondary pleasures of imagination and can generate a special kind of pleasure within himself. 
in this way 